Okie doke. Okay, so we're going to do a lot of shoulders today because I need it a lot. Um, we'll do other things too, of course. So let's bring the hands together. We'll just take a deep inhale and exhale right there. Inhale again. And on your exhale, lower your arms by your sides. Reach up for an inhale. And just lower your arms again, exhale. Reach up, inhale. Try to drop your tailbone so you don't stick your butt out. Arms by the sides, exhale. Inhale to reach up. And this time we'll fold forward for the exhale. Come halfway up, inhale. And just send the left leg back for a lunge, exhale. Straighten the right leg, inhale. Bend the leg, exhale. Back foot forward, inhale. And right foot back, exhale. Straighten the left leg, inhale. And bend the left leg, exhale. Back foot forward, inhale, chest forward, and exhale, head towards shin bones, elbows in, bend into the knees, reach up, inhale, fold again as you straighten the legs, exhale. Halfway up, inhale, send the left foot back, exhale, so just a lunge, straighten the leg, inhale, you can even flex your foot, exhale, return to the lunge. Right arm up, you can stay on tippy fingers if you have wrist issue. Lower the hand, exhale. Back foot forward, inhale, and right foot back for the exhale. Just the lunge. Straighten the left leg, inhale. Bend the left leg, exhale. A simple twist, inhale. Untwist, exhale. Back foot forward, inhale. And fold, exhale. Bend into the knees, reach up, inhale. And fold again, melt your chest towards your thighs, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. Left foot back, exhale. Straighten the leg, inhale. Bend the leg, exhale. Right arm up, twist, inhale. And lower the arm. Exhale, keep the legs strong, high lunge, both arms up, inhale, fingertips down, exhale, back foot forward, inhale, and right foot back, exhale, straighten the left leg, inhale, and bend, exhale, simple twist, inhale, untwist, exhale, keep the legs strong, reach up, inhale, and fingers down, exhale. Back foot forward, inhale. Fold, exhale. Bend to the knees, inhale. And straighten the legs as you fold, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. And this time through a vinyasa, chaturanga for the exhale. If you have wrist issues, just go straight to down dog B. And forget the vinyasa, forget the chaturanga, forget the plank. So we'll meet in down dog. A is with straight arms, B is with elbows down. And I'm still having ankle stuff, so I'm not going to put my heels on the floor in these downward dogs, but maybe you can. And after your next exhale, let's step or jump, feet forward. Inhale there at the top. Fold, exhale. Bend to the knees. Inhale. Fold, exhale. Straighten the legs. Halfway up. Inhale. And moving through your vinyasa. Exhale. Upward facing. Inhale. Downward facing. Exhale. Right leg to the sky. Inhale. Step it to the hands, exhale. High lunge, arms up, inhale. And just three-legged downward dog again. Hands down, right leg up. 
Step that foot forward, exhale. Reach up, inhale. If you have any wrist issues, just stay there in the lunge, otherwise hands down. Three-legged dog, inhale. Step forward, exhale. And we'll meet in that high lunge, whether you stayed or you traveled a few times. Let's interlace the fingers. Press the palms up to the ceiling. Get the arms a little straighter. And release the hands, step back, lower down, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Left leg to the sky, inhale. And step between the hands, exhale. High lunge, inhale. So we do this three times. If your wrists hurt, just stay in the lunge. Otherwise, three-legged dog is the inhale. Stepping forward is the exhale. Arms up, inhale. And hands down, exhale. Three-legged dog, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Reach up, interlace the fingers, palms up. We'll try to get the back leg straight. Stretch through that right wrist so you feel a stretch even in the waist. And then exhale, hands to the floor. Step into Chaturanga. Upward facing, inhale. And downward facing, A or B. Arms straight or elbows down. And just shake out the head. Relax the neck. I like how Julie's hands have to be closer together than they should be because Sally's butt is on the mat. It's pretty cute. Okay, let's lift the heels up high, turn to inhale. Bend the knees, exhale, and jump or step forward. Inhale halfway up, exhale to fold. Bend into the knees, inhale. We're gonna twist to the, to the right, hook your left elbow. And just take a breath here. No big deal. So your legs are pretty bent. Let's untwist, push down to the floor to get straight legs. And then go the other way. So it's that Anyasara concept of rooting to rise. The more you push down, the taller you could get. So let's slowly untwist, push into the feet, and get the arms higher. On the exhale, fold forward. Halfway up, inhale, and step or jump, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Right leg up high, inhale, and step forward to the hands. We'll stay here in this lunge, reach up. And let's bring the left arm under the right arm, like ropes, like uh, as tight as you can, twisting. And try to bring the thumb away from the nose, elbows up away from the chest, so that you can arch back a little bit. And change it and bring the elbows in toward the belly button and round your back. It'll feel a little bit claustrophobic. Keep breathing and unravel and just reach up. Hands to the floor, either vinyasa or downward dog. From down dog, left leg high, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Reach up, inhale. And right arm under left. Twist like ropes. I like to interlace the fingers to try to get the palms together. Elbows up, thumbs away from the nose, arc. Maybe you gaze up. And elbows in toward the belly, round. Pretend you're gonna actually poke yourself in the belly button with your elbow. And then let's unravel, reach up, inhale. Hands to the floor, to chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale, 
downward facing, exhale. Find a bit of rest and relaxation here. And after your exhale, step or jump, feet to hands. Inhale at the top of the mat, fold, exhale. Bend into the knees, reach up, inhale. And find your prayer twist, hook your left arm. I undo the prayer to get a better hook, and then just do the arms again. So we'll keep the hands together. If you have any wrist issues, you might do fists together instead. We're going to look down. Left foot back to a lunge. So otherwise it didn't really change much. The hands are still there. The hook with the arm and leg is still there. And we'll step the back foot forward again. Feet together, knees together. Left foot back again. Just find your way into that lunge. And left foot forward again. Woo! I almost fell over. And we'll untwist, press into the feet, reach up high. And fold, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. Step or jump back, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Either stay here, or we're just going to practice jumping the feet to the hands. So lift the heels, bend the knees, keep the arms straight, look past your fingers. And imagine your butt is going to make a big arc so that you can land pretty well forward. And then practice jumping back. And do that a time or two. And then all together, we'll all meet at the top of the mat. Straight legs for the inhale, fold for the exhale. Utkatasana. So we can do the other side. We'll twist, hook the right arm. Outside the left thigh, palms together. And we just step our right foot back. We try to get comfortable. And we step our right foot forward. Feet together, knees together. And again, step back. And step forward. And untwist and reach up. Then you can really feel how much work you were just doing. Fold, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. Step or jump back. Lower down, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. And relax for a few breaths. That doesn't mean everything goes limp. If you can squeeze your forearms together, you'll have a better shot at relaxing your shoulders. In the face this way. Okay. We're going to lift the right leg up high for an inhale and bring it forward to the hands. Warrior one. And I put this little shirt there for my cat, but instead it's going to become my sweat rag. Okay. Warrior one. Steeple mudra. Interlace the fingers. Point your finger up. Belly drawing in and up. If you have any back issues, you might want to lift your back heel. You might even want to bend your back knee. Let's lower the hands down. Lift the back heel and lower the knee. Just Anjaneyasana, downward facing. So we're basically looking toward the top of the mat, that top edge. And we're letting the chest and that front knee all move in that direction. Lift the back knee, we'll turn it into triangle, just straighten the front leg, scoop that right hip under, left arm up. Let's bring that left arm behind the back, try to grab that right thigh. Lean that left shoulder back a little bit more. And the ability to do that comes from your right leg working harder, your right hip moving under. We'll unravel, rise up, core strength, and bend into that knee. 
Vinyasa. Hands come down, step back, bend the elbows. Inhale, and down dog, exhale. We'll lift the left leg up high, and step it forward to the hands. Warrior one, steeple mudra. We're gonna try to bring that right hip forward, the right ribs forward. And turning it into Anjaneyasana, fingers down, back, knee down. Trajectory is forward and down. So you should feel something in the right hip. We'll start to straighten the right knee, lower the heel, grab hold of the left foot or wherever you want to hold so that you can straighten your leg and wind up in triangle. Right arm behind the back. So to get that hook pretty good with your fingers, you're gonna roll your shoulder forward and then bend your elbow back. So it all starts from where your arm is connected to your body. Release that right arm up, strong core, inhale up, and bend into the knee, step back, exhale to chaturanga. Upward facing, inhale, downward facing, exhale. Right foot forward, warrior one. This time, we're gonna bring the left hand to the right thigh, we've done this before, right hand to the back leg, so it feels like a crazy twist. You can actually gaze over your right shoulder if you want, or you can look straight ahead. And slip the hands away, inhale, arms up, and fingertips down for Anjaneyasana. Again, either repeat the same thing we did, or you're gonna move your right foot a little bit further to the right, both hands big toe side, and maybe come to the elbows. For this one, that right foot's going to face forward. I know there's a one that we all love where the toes go out to the side. So much easier. But for right now, just try to keep that knee hugging into the shoulder as best you can. Okay, we'll return to hands if you went low. Bring that right foot back to a more normal lunge place. We're going to turn it into warrior two. Windmill on up. Gomukhasana arms. So the right arm is going to come up and over, bend the elbow, and try to get your fingertips near your shoulder blades. Left hand can stay there or reach back, roll the shoulder forward, and link your fingers. You could hold a strap or put your hands just on your t-shirt. And we'll slowly unravel, hands come down, step back, either vinyasa or straight to dog, so that you can do the other side. Left foot forward for warrior one. Right hand to left thigh, left arm back. And when I first get hold of that back leg, sometimes it's knuckles, and then when you can, you flip it around, your palm will be on basically the front of your right thigh. It's pretty gnarly shoulder stretch, but it also feels good. And we'll slowly unravel, turn it into Anjaneyasana. Either stay there or lizard, hands inside. The foot just walks a little bit to the left so that you have space for that left hand or for that left forearm. Okay, into warrior two we go. So we start to walk that left foot in, 
The back heel comes down so that we have heel to arch alignment and we rise up. There should be no back pain here, neutral pelvis. If everything's feeling good, then start playing with the arms, left arm up and over, elbow up, and the right arm rolls forward so that you can get your fingers. And keep thinking pubic bone up. That will help keep you in neutral, even though you have this more difficult arm situation. And we'll slowly get out of there. Vinyasa or downward dog. I'm going to take this opportunity to again wipe sweat. Holy moly. Okay, let's lift the right leg up high. Inhale. And bring it forward to the hands for just a twisted lunge, like what you've already done a few times. So I like to roll the flesh of the thigh in, just using the thumb. And then that twist is a little easier. This time, if you can, left hand down, right arm up. If you can, bend your left elbow, put your right fingers on your forearm, and just nudge your hand under your leg. Then the right hand can come around and complete the bind. So the hard part on this is that bottom arm getting that rotation. But as soon as the fingers are on the other side of the hip, then it's fine. Let's slowly unravel and just change sides. Left leg forward. Take your time getting the twist, because if you're going to go for a bind, you need your whole arm to work for you. Right hand down, left arm up, or stay in the prayer if you need to. And notice if you have your right hand on the floor, your armpit is really close to your leg. And just bend your elbow. I use the left hand to just give that right arm a little nudge under. Palm is facing out so that then the left arm is free to go around. And we'll slowly unravel. Step back. Exhale to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Let's bring the right hand to the center, right foot outside the hand, and we'll come into the more humane version of lizard. We'll turn the toes out and let the knee drop open. And when the knee drops open, you might be inspired to come to the elbows. You might want the back knee up. It changes things in the hips. We'll return to the hands and just creep this right foot to the left side of the mat for pigeon. Attempt to bring the chest toward your shin bone and let your right knee be far enough back that you feel a stretch in your hip. If this pose is too easy, it's just time to work the knees further back. Okay, hands down, downward dog. And left foot to the outside of the left hand. You can lower that right knee down as you adjust. Left foot will spin out. Maybe we come to the forearms. Maybe I should get one of those sweatbands for my head so that it doesn't drip in my face all the time. So back me up if you did it on the other side. And return to the hands, walk the left foot to the right, pigeon. So wherever your right foot lands, you can keep it there, or sorry, left foot, wherever this left foot lands, keep it there and move your knees accordingly. 
So if you need less stretch, you move your knees forward. That foot just stays put. If you need more stretch, you just move your knees back and the foot stays put. It's a lot easier that way than trying to move that foot around. Okay, let's rise to the palms. Step back, either down dog or vinyasa. We'll lift the right leg up high, and we'll just bring it three quarters of the way forward for Parshvottanasana. We'll lower the back heel so that our heels line up, and we'll try to square our hips to the front of the mat. If you can balance and you don't need your fingers on the ground, interlace your fingers behind you, and start to reach them overhead. You can bring your forehead to your leg or your chin to your leg. We'll rise up about halfway, release the fingers, and let's stay on left fingertips for a twisted triangle. Either side of the foot, but that fingertip situation is just gonna give you an extra like two inches of lift so that you can twist a little bit deeper. Keep swinging the right hip back as best you can. And we'll unravel, bend into the knee so you can step back with straight arms. And other side, left leg up, and bring it about three quarters of the way forward. Heels line up, legs straight. And if you can't get the legs straight with your hands down, you can have your hands on your shin or on blocks. Interlace the fingers behind you if you want. Chest forward. And we'll start to rise up. The hands will come down. Fingertips of the right hand will stay down wherever you want them to be. Left arm up. Twisted triangle. Lots of weight on that left foot. Let's slowly unravel. Step back. Vinyasa or downward dog. We'll bring the right foot forward for Anjanayasana. Left knee down. For right now, let's keep the toes tucked back there so that it just more resembles a lunge. And it'll be a little easier to keep the hips straight forward. When you're ready, interlace your fingers behind you like you did just moments ago and start to reach them down toward your back knee. Whether they touch or not will depend on your flexibility, but just let it open the chest and the shoulders. And we'll slowly release. Quarter turn to the left. Prasarata Padottanasana A. Hands down, elbows in, and head down. So this is a great place to practice keeping the elbows in because you have a really clear view. If your elbows are kind of splaying out toward your legs, there will be no strength in the back so that if you wanted to ever come into headstands, it would not be available. So in a pose like this, you, you keep them in and you're training your upper back well. Let's re-straighten the arms. Walk them to the left, Anjaneyasana on side two, with the right toes curled under. When you can, interlace your fingers behind the back. Maybe roll one shoulder at a time. Eventually, the arms get straighter. Chest goes up.
We'll slowly release. We'll walk the hands to the side. I'm just going to flip around. You stay where you are. Samokonasana. So we'll just keep walking our feet apart until they will go no more. And when that happens, just spin the toes and kneecaps up so your heels stay down. Walk your hands back and slide down the rest of the way. So your inner thighs just kind of go down your forearms. And when you get there, hands to prayer. Make sure your legs are still strong so that your kneecaps are still facing straight up. And just flip the hands around so your knuckles are in. And you can get your wrists to bend them the other way. Okay, so we'll go to the right leg first. Either Anjanayasana, which you've already done with your right leg bent, or Hanumanasana with your right leg straight. So you decide what works for you. We really do want to emphasize this left hip flexor, even if we're in the full Hanuman. It's not all about that right leg hamstring. So it's the same hip flexor situation, just a little bit more. Anjane is a great prep for Hanuman. Okay, take it around to the other side. So use the hands to lift your pelvis up. Walking, walk, walk, walk until we're facing the left. And then make a choice. Anjane is this one where your front leg is bent and we're trying to stretch through that right hip flexor. And then when you decide to go to Hanuman, it's still a stretch through this right hip flexor. Just taking it a little further and dealing now also with that left hamstring. Okay, we'll come around to the center and we'll keep our hips pretty high. We'll just start to walk the feet to a prasarata stance again. Hands to the hips and then inhale to stand. And we'll just come to the top of the mat. Reach up for an inhale and fold forward, exhale. If you don't want a vinyasa, just take a seat. We'll meet you there in a moment. Those of you vinyasa in, go to downward dog. Now we're going to bring our right leg forward, but not to pigeon. We're going to bring our knee between the hands to the center of the mat. Then move the hands out of the way and bring your left leg under. So your thighs are crossed very high. You can either sit on the ground or sit on the feet. And if you're sitting on the ground, you might want to block under your butt. That's fine. If you don't have a block, just use a couch pillow. Let's interlace the fingers underneath the knee. This is very tricky. We're going to lift the chest and push the knee down into the hand. And it's that, that uh, counterbalance that sort of keeps us from falling out of this pose. B position, same arms that you did before. Right elbow is going to face the ceiling, left elbow will face the floor. Link the hands, push the head back. And we'll slowly unravel. And let's just step to downward dog so that the other side is pretty easy to get into. Or you can just unravel your legs if you prefer to stay on your butt. So left knee to center of the mat, cross real high up on the thigh, so that the thighs are connected the whole way. And if you're choosing not to sit on the floor or the block, if you're sitting on your feet, your feet are very close together and they're facing back, the back edge of the mat. So we'll try to interlace the fingers under the knee. One of the things I find really hard about it is that you have to lean forward to get that grip, but then you wanna to try to sit up again. So the chest has to lift. Ooh. I'm having some difficulty today with this balance. But one of the nice things about a yoga practice is whether it's easy or it's hard, it comes and goes. So 
So now we do B. So whether A happened for you or not, moving right along to B. Left elbow up, right elbow down. You can use the strap here or the shirt. Head presses back. You can gaze up. And we'll slowly get out of there and vinyasa. Let's jump through to sitting. So we've been working on this in some of the other classes. Shoulders forward, butt up high. Keep your shoulders forward so that your butt doesn't touch until you stay so. It doesn't just fall to the ground. Okay, take a moment just in Dandasana. Make sure the legs are straight. Just like in your Samukhanasana, you have to control where your kneecaps are facing. We'll bend into the right knee. Bring the foot close. And we'll hug the knee to the left shoulder. Find your hook if you can, and your bind if you can. So the thumb goes down around your ankle, your elbow will be bending in front of your shin bone. And then you lift up your back hand to complete the bind. And we'll slowly get out of there. We're going to go for double pigeon, left leg on top. I have to adjust my pants. Sometimes they get kind of stuck. Okay, so double pigeon, we're just flexed feet, shins lining up, ankles over knees. If you can, add a twist. So we're going to put the elbow on the arch, and maybe the tricep, and maybe the shoulder. So you go as far over as you can. And then you can either do hands to prayer or anything else. The fist bump, if you have wrist issues. I like to do this one where my forearm stays on the ground, and I just push down with the right hand to twist a little more. Okay, we'll slowly get out of there. Woo, wipe the sweat, vinyasa. So we're gonna lean back enough to get the feet off the ground and place the hands, and now we have to lean forward to get our butt off the ground. And jump it back. Inhale and exhale. So jumping through. Just try not to land prematurely. So keep your arms straight and land when you decide it's time. Mari C, side two. So the left knee bends. We hug the knee to the right shoulder and twist. Potentially hook the arm. And if you're going for the bind, roll your shoulder first and then your hand will clear the shin. The knuckles of that right hand are going to be near the right hip. Left hand will just lift up to meet it. And we'll slowly unwind. Double pigeon. Right leg on top. I'm just going to face this way so that I don't stare at the sheet hanging on my wall. Okay, so once your hips are comfy, ankles are comfy, then add the twist. Another way into it, I think I showed you this trick on Friday. If you hold your shoulder, you can kind of pull yourself around a little bit more. So you're just using your body to work for you as best you can. And once you're in it, it's pretty relaxing. Getting into it is the hardest part, which is true for a lot of poses. Okay, so we'll slowly unravel and vinyasa. So practice leaning back enough to get your feet up. Then arms are straight from the get-go. We lean forward then, we get the butt up, and we lean enough to slide the feet through. And from your vinyasa, again, we'll jump through to sitting. So take your time. It might be a few tries. But try to land at least here 
or straighten the legs and then come down. Okay, right leg. You're either going to fold like this, foot to thigh, or like this, backwards. Then face your right leg. You're twisting. Reach the right arm up and make a big arc over to that foot. If you don't touch the foot, it's fine. You could hold a strap so your hand could be like up here. I never really used to bother because I'm lazy about acquiring my strap. So another trick that I like is forearm behind the head. And then even if I'm not going to touch my foot, it's helping to keep the top ribs moving back. And then I don't really need to involve a strap, I'm just using my head. And we'll slowly rise up. And let's just change sides. So the right leg straight. You don't have to change your direction. I'm just doing that for the camera. So first there's the twist. Then there's the side bend. And there's that reach. Even if you are putting your forearm behind your head, it's like your elbow is reaching out. So you still feel a stretch through the left waist. And the right hand can be anywhere, really, on your thigh. It could be on your foot. It could be reaching out. Full pose is on the foot. But you need to do something that helps you feel good in the pose. And we'll slowly get out of there. And that's vinyasa. So we'll practice curling into a little ball, essentially, leaning forward and sliding the feet through. Let's meet in downward dog B. So we'll come to the, the forearms. And we'll try to get the elbows behind the wrists. And we're not going to let the hands migrate toward each other. We're going to keep them right where they are. Just take two more breaths. If this is not easy and comfortable for you, just wait a couple years and it will be. Okay, we'll re-straighten the arms. Let's come to tabletop and then reach the fingers out in front. Actually, let's go palms flat. We're going to drop the chest down. This is Anahatasana. So the butt is sticking up, and we're opening through the chest and upper back. But to minimize how much you're bending your low back, find your bandhas. So draw your sitting bones closer together. Draw your belly in. and slowly slide forward and just find a forearm plank, knees up. No problem, right? Forearm plank, fun. A little bit challenging. Okay, return to the knees and then just straighten the arms, normal downward dog. Okay, so believe it or not, all of this stuff has been prepping us for Pashasana, which is the first pose in second series and it's very gnarly. So let's jump forward and squat. Feet together, knees together. And everyone's gonna do this pose a little bit differently. And we'll take it in stages so that you can decide kind of where to get off the track. So option one, let's all do this together. Hook your right arm, because that's the direction we twist first in Pashasana. Hook your right arm outside of your left thigh. So it's like Utkatasana, which you did before. That awkward chair pose with the prayer. And try and get your butt low. So just take a moment there. It's hard to get your butt low. It takes so much quads. Then unravel and squat for a moment, which is, for most of us, relaxing. If it's not, just come to your butt for a moment because we have two more variations to attempt. Okay, so we'll come up again. 
This time we're gonna bring the right shoulder inside of the knee. So the knees are apart, even though the feet are together. We're gonna wrap that right arm around. So it's a very tricky shoulder thing. Your palm has to face up as it goes around. And then you can hold hands or you can use the strap. And while you're squatting here, you're gonna think about bringing your knees closer together. Just take another breath. This we would call Ardha Pashasana, because you're halfway in it. And then unravel your hand and take a seat or just stay squatting. So the only difference between that and the full pose is in the full pose you have both legs that you have to wrap around. So it's a little bit more for the shoulder. So let's return to squatting and you decide either one of those you repeat. I actually start in the twisted chair. And then try to work that right arm in front of the shin. And then the hands hold in the vicinity of that right hip. And then full pose is heels down, but you might want to have your butt on something or your heels on something. And we'll slowly unravel and take a little rest. Maybe shake out the legs. And let's vinyasa before we do the other side. We'll jump forward, squat. And then just like that root to rise thing we did way earlier on, if you press into your feet a little bit, your butt comes up. Let's hook that left elbow outside the right thigh, hands together, and you start to drop your butt as much as you can without falling on it or losing the control. And unravel, rest for a moment. Ooh, so it's a lot of quads to stay up in there. Okay, so the Ardha Pashasana form, if it's too much to have your feet together, you could have your feet wide, no big deal. We're gonna bring our left shoulder inside of the knee, and then it's gonna wrap around. So as you're reaching, palm up. So the shoulder situation is happening right from the beginning. And then you just try to squeeze the knees together, look over the right shoulder. And unravel. Take a little rest, and then we'll either repeat one of those, or you'll go for full pashasana, which is a doozy. Okay, so when you're ready, hook your left arm as far over as you can, and take your way around. So since it's the front arm, that's doing so much of the work, I usually deal with that one first. The other one has a very quick trick. So we'll slowly unravel, and let's meet in downward dog. Let's turn it into B position again on the forearms. And let's turn it into that forearm plank again. You can just walk your feet back. And lower to the knees. We'll come to hands and knees again. So Anahatasana round two, just a different variation on it. We're gonna um, come to the elbows and then have our forearms up. I like to have the elbows a little bit close on this one. And you can adjust where your knees go. I like to also come to fingertips. I'll show you this way. Uh, so that the palms are actually separated. It just feels a little more dramatic in the shoulders.
and we'll slowly get out of there. And let's just meet in downward dog. Shake it out, relax the neck. So out of all the places in the house that the cat can go, right now she has opened up my book and is sitting on the pages of the book. Not on the cover, she wanted it open. Okay, so let's rock forward to plank and just come to chaturanga. Take an inhale there and exhale to the belly. Right arm out to the side, roll over onto it. The legs can do anything really. I use my left leg to just catch me, but I've seen all kinds of things go on with people's legs. And we'll come through center over to the other side. So left arm, shoulder height or eyeball height, you don't want it to be too low because then you won't feel anything. Okay, and we'll come back through center, forearms down, sphinx. So we're just gonna lower the chest enough to roll the shoulders back. And then you can lift the chest again. You might have to repeat that a few times. You just wanna feel like your shoulder blades are sliding down. If there's no back pain, just lift your elbows a few inches. And gently lower the elbows again. One more time. See what happens to your butt. Try not to clench too much and lower down. We'll replace elbows with palms and we'll just come up a teeny bit. And keep rolling the shoulders back and down. Keep squeezing the ribs with the elbows and just pay attention to your butt again. And let's lift up and back, downward dog. So if you had any wrist issues in a chaturanga or just now when we lower it down, you're gonna to come to your forearms and you're gonna stay in forearm plank. If you have no wrist issues, we're gonna, um, let's back up a little bit. So I'm gonna start with my hands about here in relation to the top of the mat, because we're gonna take a chaturanga and hop it forward and then hop it back. And it's more comfortable if you stay on your mat. So if you're not choosing forearm plank, you're gonna just come to normal plank, straight arms, bend your elbows, exhale, and hop your chaturanga forward. And again, it all comes from your core. And back up, upward facing dog, inhale, and downward dog, exhale. And those of you in forearm plank, just come into downward dog. And we'll try that again in a little bit. We're just gonna do a little bit of ab stuff before we try that again. Let's come through to sitting. So everybody thinks that a chaturanga hopping around is gonna be all arms and things, but it's so much belly, because otherwise the hips drop. So let's just think of lifting knees to chest. And we'll just lean back enough to get the feet off the ground, but nothing crazy. And bring the knees together and just straighten the right leg. Bend the right, straighten the left. Bend the left and straighten both. Soles of the feet together, knees out to the side, inhale. And we'll fold forward, exhale. Baddha Panasana. Rise up, take that high boat again, and this time turn it into a low boat. So we'll lower the shoulders and the feet. Let's bring the right leg up, hold on to the calf, and just tap your shin to your head and let it go out to meet the left. And then bring the left leg in, very gently, just escort the shin to your head 
and let it go. Rise up to that high boat and bring the soles of the feet together again. Inhale and fold. Exhale. Okay, so we'll rise up. Feel free to repeat any of that stuff we just did, balancing on the butt. Otherwise, we'll do similar things from a headstand position. So we'll lower down to the forearms, and you'll get a triangle shape like this. You'll place your head, and I'll talk you through it. I'm going to tuck in my shirt to my pantaloons. Hopefully, it will stay. So go on up to your headstand. You can always have a wall behind you if that helps you feel happy. And we'll keep one leg up, and we'll just bring the other leg to where we can see it. We can count how many toes we have. And bring that leg up again to meet the top leg. And the second leg will come down so that it's roughly parallel to the floor, you see your toes. And bring that leg up again, and let's bring both legs down so we're in an L shape. And we're just gonna stay here and breathe. And the butt will go back a bit to counterbalance the legs. You can point your toes here if you want. Very slowly take it up again. And the way out, we're going to come through a child's pose. So we'll bring the knees into the chest and round into a little ball where the knees wind up close to the head and we're pretty much already there. Slowly make your way to down dog. You can vinyasa out of there or not. Let's rock forward to plank. Then step the right foot forward. And come to that side plank variation where the toes all face the right. And reach up with that right hand. Press that right foot down so that the hip goes up but then let it weaken and let your hips drop. And then press, let the hips lift, and let the hips drop. And one more time. Okay. And try the other side. Right foot back, left foot forward. Side plank variation. Left arm up. So everything's pretty high at first, and then you intentionally let them go down and rise. Intentionally down, and you push into that left foot, hips up. One more time. And lower the hand, step back. Okay, so if you have any wrist issues, you're going to do your next side plank on your forearm. Otherwise, you could stay on your palm, or, you know, just choose based on what your shoulder wants. All right, so rock forward to plank, left hand down, right arm up, just normal and let your hips drop down, and then hoist them up. And you're gonna feel the obliques working. They'll drop, and then they're gonna hoist you. And they're gonna get your hips back up in line. Drop it down, and hoist it up. And change sides. Lower it down, and lift. Two more times, and lift. Last time, and lift. Hands down, downward dog. Shake out the head. Okay, so one more little headstand ab thing, and then we're gonna try um, that chaturanga again, jumping forward and back. Same thing, we're just gonna have knees bending this time. So start the same, head down, come to the toes, and then the ascent is just a shift forward onto the tippy toes until eventually they lift an inch and then more and more until you're vertical. So we're just going to bring the knees to the chest. Exhale. And then lift the legs up again. And it might take more than just a breath. Because if we move fast, we might fall out of this. So go at your own pace. 
We'll bring the knees in again. This time, when you're at your lowest point, separate the knees, go for armpits, and then lift up again. And then the other way, we'll bring knees to armpits. And then once they're as close as they're going to be, bend together and then up. Holy moly. Core is insane doing those practices. So we'll end up in child's pose again. Those are the kind of things that never get boring. So try to do them every day just a little bit. Okay, and we'll rise up, downward dog. So people with wrist issues, chaturanga itself is a challenge. Don't bother jumping with it. You'll go to forearm plank. Everyone else, move your hands back a little bit so that we're just gonna take three jumps forward and back. So it's all about keeping your hips lifted. Find your plank, exhale to chaturanga, and then exhale forward. And again. And again. And then back. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. We'll rock forward to plank and come down to the belly. Those of you from forearm plank, you can just lower. The floor is close. We'll come to sphinx. Just to set us up, the left arm is going to slide under the right armpit, walking out there. And then the right arm will come over to the side so that we have a straight line with our arms. Then we just drop our head toward the floor. Some of you, your forehead is going to touch the floor. Mine is nowhere close to the floor. But that's part of the tight shoulder situation. Okay, we slowly unravel, and we'll just try the other side. So the right arm snakes under the left, and the left will walk over to the right. So you end up with your hands off your mat. Try to draw the belly in so that you're not overarching your back. Okay, and we'll slowly get out of there. Let's bring the hands just under the chest. A little cobra, inhale, and downward dog, exhale. Shake out the head. Okay, so we'll come to hands and knees again. Just checking, okay, the clock. All right, so we're gonna come to um, Bada has to see. This was Badahasta A, your hands were interlaced. Look at where the elbows are. And then for C position, the elbows are in the same spot, but your hands are flat. So that's it, elbows and head are in the same spot. So we're gonna try C if you can, otherwise repeat A. And again, we're gonna try to bring the knees in, curl into a little ball. Potentially you could land them on your arms and get your head off the ground. Um, just to prep for a Karandavasana eventually. But that's just if you think it would be fun. So we'll take C position, measure out your elbows, plant your hands, and then just start to walk your feet in. Try not to kick, even if you have a wall behind you. Kicking is really just going to train you to fling yourself, and it's not going to develop the strength of the core. So once you feel like you're balanced, just start to bring your knees in toward your chest and then toward your armpits. And I did not land it. But if I were to have landed it, it would have looked like this. I did not end up here. But sometimes I do. Just not now. So let's try it one more time because the second time is a charm. Tim always says, rarely in life do you get a second chance. 
So in yoga practice, we get a second chance. So measure out your elbows, place your hands, place your head, walk it in. And just take your time playing in the balance. And as you bend the knees, it's a lot of belly in. My toes touch down again. Okay. I had a choir teacher in college who would have us do each song in the repertoire for like four minutes, and then she would just have us moving right along. And I said, we're never going to know enough for the performance this way. Sure enough, we did. So we won't dwell. So let's sit in Dandasana again. Knuckles down, palms up, chest up, legs straight. And if you have any wrist issues, you could do this on fingertips or forearms, or just don't do it. Hands are going to come back, chest up, and just like in your side planks, push down, get your hips up. This is Purvottanasana. And slowly come on down. Bring the soles of the feet close to you, so you're in like a little ball, butt close to heels, and just reach forward just to counterbalance the Prabhupada which we're going to do one more time, because it's really good for strengthening the hamstrings. Okay, legs out. So glue your legs together. They have to be on the same page with each other. Hands will come back, chest will lift up, and push into your heels to get your butt up. One, two, Three, four, and five. Come on down. And again, bring your heels in as close to you as you can. When the arms are there, it's pretty easy to connect your chest to your thighs. But now when you reach forward, it takes a lot of work. So not just chest to thighs, but knee to knee. Okay, separate the knees so you can rock onto the forearms and just step back, down dog B. Okay, very gentle backbend of Pinchamayarasana. I'm going to back up a little bit just in case things go awry. I don't want to end up going through a glass door. So from down dog B, you can just shift your weight a little bit forward so that your shoulders are no longer back pressing towards your legs. They're pretty much over your forearms. And then you can lift sort of through a split. So try not to fling. And we'll come on down. Straighten the arms again. Right leg forward, back knee down. Ananayasana. Okay. I'm going to face this way. So we'll attempt a Bekasana grip for that left foot. But again, it's very shouldery. So let's take it one piece at a time. First, just hold the left inner foot. Make sure that this feels okay in the shoulder. If you have any wrist issues, you're gonna flip to your knuckles and your palm is gonna face out. And you're just gonna practice with the knuckles pushing your foot toward you. If you have no wrist issues, you're gonna pull your foot toward you and then with the palm of the, the hand, you're gonna push the top of the foot down. It's when the foot gets close to you that you can switch your wrist position. If the foot was way back here, I can't get the fingers to curl over the toes. 
Okay, slowly let that go. And just spin yasa or change legs so you wind up on the other side. So first, Arjunayasana has to be comfortable. When it is, reach for the inside of your foot. Now this has to be comfortable. And you're either gonna use the knuckles to push your foot in, or start pulling the foot in. Once it's pretty close to the hip, see what happens with my elbow, it will spin up. And then the palm of the hand has an easier time pushing onto the bony top of your foot. And we'll slowly let that go. Step back, down dog or vinyasa. And we'll come onto the knees, so land on the toenails and just gently curl over the shins. And we'll have a little seat. We're going to come to the elbows. And once we get there, we're going to now lift our hips off the ground. Walk your hands to your heels and come to the crown of the head. So you have shins on the ground, two elbows, and a head. If you can, take hold of opposite elbows overhead and let your forearms try to drop down. So now it's up to the strength of your legs and your feet to keep your hips up. Take one more breath, it's very hard, I know. And let's melt into Supta Virasana, which who would have thought this pose would ever be a rest in place. But after what you just did, ah, this is more of a noodle pose. Not complete noodle pose, however. So we're still trying to press our inner knees up. Press the pinky toes down. Okay, let's get out of there. Prop yourself on the elbows. Then walk the hands back so you can use the hands. And downward dog. Down dog B on the forearms. Potentially into Pinchamayarasana again which is a nice back bend. So I like to do it sometimes between back bends. It's a gentle back bend. So those of us who are not super flexible, we can still do a pinch of Hyarasana, but we have to have control. Which I'm lacking today a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty funny, okay. So we'll come on down. We're gonna jump again onto the shins. And again, start in that Virasana place. Ah, okay. So we'll start in the same way. We'll do something else a little bit with the hands. So as you come back, you can see your inner knees lift each time you tuck your tailbone. So make sure you're doing that, especially those of us whose backs are like not that cooperative. We need to work harder. So once you're comfy, again, you're gonna lift your hips up, come to the top of your head. This time you'll place your palms on the mat like you would Urdhva Dhanurasana. And you'll just practice pushing into your hands. You may or may not wind up with your head off the ground but it is fun to try pushing down to lift you up. Sukta Virasana for the exit to help us be a noodle for a moment. And then coming up, downward dog. Shake out the head. Let's come to sitting. Yes, I'm just looking at the clock. When I look over out in whatever field that is, to me it's right field, but I don't even know if this is flipping the image or not. 
So we'll lay back, lift the hips, and try to interlace the fingers under the back. All the way to the webbing. Palms together if you can. Then we're gonna land our butt on the forearms. Oh, it feels so good. So it's just a chest opener. And you don't have to do anything. You just sit on yourself. Okay, we'll lift the hips again. This time come onto the balls of the feet and try to get your palms under your hip bones. For those of you with wrist issues, don't do this. Repeat the same grip we were in before. So with the hands under your hip bones, your hips are as high as your forearm bone, which theoretically, and most of us, it's gonna be higher than you would have put your hips if you were just left to your own devices. So let's see, try to keep your hips that high, slip your hands away, and just reach anywhere. And you'll see how much work your legs have to do to keep you up there. Okay, slowly come on down. Okay, Urdhva Dhanurasana or any of those other things. For Urdhva, you put your hands by your shoulders. Elbows have to be in. You can always come to the top of your head and check your elbows with your eyeballs. And then straighten the arms. Use the legs to try to get the pelvis up a little bit higher. And come on down. We're just going to do one more. Those of you who just did Urkva, this time you're going to go for forearm version. It's not that different. It is, but it's fun. So just come up like you would, lower to the top of the head, and just walk your hands back. So if you thought elbows in was an important concept before, now it is even more so. If your elbow splays out, you will not be able to walk your hand back towards your foot. Your elbow has to be in the periphery of your vision in order for your hand to be able to get back far enough for your forearm to come to the ground. We'll slowly exit if you're on your forearms, go to Urdhva again, and we'll land on the shoulders. And once you get to your back, we'll just lift the legs up, point the toes. So you're just in an L shape. And let's just draw on the ceiling, just a little circle. Massage the back a bit. Try not to let the shoulders rock too much. So feel like your, your abs are your anchor. Go the other direction. We'll let the right leg stay there and just slowly lower the left leg till it's like hovering above the ground. And do a little sit up and take a peek at it. Potentially, you need to roll your thigh in more so that your decaf faces the ceiling. For a lot of us, it would have gone out a bit to like a ballet position. So roll it in, lower the head and shoulders, and lift the left to meet the right and start to lower the right. So as you lower it, it's reaching away from you and it's rolling in. We'll get it to hover. We'll do a little sit up and just make sure we have any idea what's happening there. Then lower the head and shoulders and right leg up. So we'll go with both legs now, but chances are you're not gonna go as low. If you start to feel anything negative in your back, you go no further. And try to keep your back pressing down. Keep your legs squeezing together. And slowly rise up with the legs. Soles of the feet together. Wrap your fingers around the pinky edge. Variation on Supta Baddha Konasana. Knees out.
into happy baby. Let's change the foot orientation and start to press the knees down. We'll release the leg somehow, sit up. Left leg will stay straight, right foot to inner thigh. Twist and fold. Janusha Sasana A. So reach your right armpit towards your left foot. We'll rise up, change legs, right leg straight, left leg bends in. If you were to just fold without thinking of a twist, you'd end up between your thighs. So there's an active twist happening. Go over that straight leg. And we'll rise up, straighten out that left leg, and we'll plunk the right foot down on the outside of the knee. I'm gonna face the other leg. So if you are comfortable uh, with that left knee, knee bent, then also you can bend it, but it could stay straight. We're gonna twist to the right. Hug or hook your elbow. If you have some force here with your arm pushing your knee away from your twist, you will be able to reach down for your arch. This power comes from your shoulder. Let's slowly untwist. Extend the legs out wide. We'll do the other side in a moment. Reach for the edges of the feet. Ubhavisha Konasana. We'll rise up and the other side. So legs in, left foot over. Right leg straight or bends in. Hug your knee to your right shoulder or hook the elbow. And just like in that Pashasana that we did earlier, there's no gap really here between your torso and your leg. There's like very minimal space. And then when you go to reach down, you have your whole arm working for you. We'll slowly unravel and let's see what time it is. Okay, so we're just gonna sit. I'm thinking shoulder stand, but we're gonna sit. So if you can, half lotus with your right leg and then full lotus with your left. But any other sitting position will work just the same. So we're gonna do a little bit of retention of the breath. So just bring your hands to your knees in any way that suits you and just inhale through the nose. And slowly exhale through the nose. Again, inhale. This time when you get to the top of your breath, bring your chin to your chest. Just hold for a few seconds. And lift your chin and let it go. Again, inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. And 
exhale. This time without a retention, inhale, smooth. And exhale. With the sound of Om, hands to prayer, inhale. When you're ready for Shavasana, you can stay seated or you can lay back. You can put your legs up on the wall or the couch.
Let's take a few more breaths here. And you start to bring the knees in toward your chest at your own pace. And with the eyes closed, we'll rock up. And bring the hands together in front of the chest. Namaste.